Hey guys. Hey, hey. Good evening. Um, I'm finally live and I am hoping that everyone can hear me. So, okay. I have managed to check on my own now on my phone on the group. So it seems it's all okay. Right. Oh, I can take a sigh of relief. Do you know what was the worst thing? Has this ever happened to you where you've you know, prepped yourself completely in terms of the job or the task that you're going to undertake and uh, you know for sure at you know, 100% that everything that needs to be taken care of has been taken care of. And, and after you've completed the task, you only realize after everything is over that there was one tiny element that was missing, which actually made the biggest difference in the whole task. Has this ever happened to you? I'm sure it's happened to a lot of people and I have just experienced this this morning. Actually, you know, I experienced it a little while ago because I did the same Facebook Live this morning. You know, everybody, uh, firstly, it's great that everybody got active on the poll and everybody's putting in their contribution because I know, uh, you know, the whole current external world has created a bit of lethargy and a lull in all of uh, uh, our states of mind. So I'm glad that the poll is up and running and that everybody has been actively participating in the poll and talking about what they need. So thank you for that. And uh, based on what everybody was saying in that poll, I decided to do an impromptu Facebook Live to share a few things that I know are very, very essential and a few things that make the biggest difference. So also proof that nobody saw that Facebook Live because I went through it after everything was over and I realized that the sound hadn't come through. And how embarrassing is that? You know, and, I, and you know, as hoteliers and people in the hotel and hospitality business, we, we do not take embarrassment very lightly, right? It affects us personally. So for me, this was my complete crash moment. It was, it was like one of those instances where I've had in the early stages of my career, where I was at the hotel and uh, I was wearing these super high heels and I was feeling really proud of myself that, you know, I'm, I'm looking amazing in those heels. And before I knew it, the heel got caught in my sari and I tripped and tumbled and went woo straight out. How embarrassing was that? Not going to remind myself over it. But yes, so this morning's live, even though I thought I had set up all my technology really well, having said that, I'm using some new technology, so it's possibly that I missed out a few things in it and didn't know. But this one is working, so I'm glad. Okay, so I'm going to have to redo what I did this morning, but it's for a good cause and it's well worth it. Okay, uh, let me jump in straight and I'm going to share my screen with you so that you see what I'm seeing. There we are. Ah, brilliant. So, since everybody's been talking about attitude, mindset for success, everybody's been talking about management skills, everybody's been talking about integrity, everybody's been talking about emotional well-being, all of these factors play a very, very vital role in every single thing we do. And uh, as you're seeing on my screen, it's in times of change that those who are willing to learn and adapt that excel and succeed in the new world. So what does that really mean? You know, we all know it's a new world. It's been said enough. It's going to keep being said till our external world has some kind of a normality. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about how the situation plays out other than being sensible, keeping ourselves safe, keeping ourselves protected and so on. But in the new world, we have no choice but to excel. We have no choice but to succeed because as human beings, we are naturally inclined towards survival. And it's not just survival, but as hoteliers, we want to thrive, isn't it? So how can we in 
the new world adapt and change and learn and and so on because we know that our skills that we have will still be required but what's definitely changed and whether we realize it or not we have changed this whole situation has made a massive impact on our psychology so to be able to now think in a different way and to be able to now do things in a different way is going to be the biggest biggest learning and an and adaptation that we need and i want to share something that i my guru talks about and that is excellence and success are 80% psychology and 20% skill so anybody who's uh who knows of tony robbins has ever heard of him has ever seen a bit of his work or has ever attended any of his events will know this aspect that at the end of the day it's our psychology over skill that makes the biggest difference in everything we do all of us in this collective are trained hoteliers we may not be trained in the same area of the hotel but we're all trained and skilled enough on our jobs what makes the difference on the people who progress the people who succeed the people who persevere the people who uh, you know gain promotions or you know you know thrive in their careers is the psychology and same thing goes for organization same things go for hotel to hotel why does one hotel succeed over another it's because the team that works there their mindsets are in sync the psychology is success oriented and so on so i wanted to just jump in and share a little more of this with you guys so you know where you need to put, place your attention going forward into this new normal yeah so um everybody knows about the iceberg right you know an iceberg is visible or one seventh on above the level of water and six seventh below the level of water so the massive part of the iceberg is below and what is above is just one seventh of it um in our places of work we say we say we work with our vision with our mission with our goals with our strategy with our values with our policies correct that's what we set that's what we set towards uh, achieving or or uh, we create these from the point of some kind of a road map on what we need to uh, uh what results we need and so on uh but what's really happening is below the surface what's the area that's influencing all of this that we do is below the surface now on the on the surf on the uh below the surface level if you see these points the first aspect that affects all of us is our culture you know we all come from different cultures it doesn't matter whether we live in the same country whether we live in a different country we speak the same language don't speak the same language and so on we all have a unique culture and that culture comes down to our specific traditions our specific way of upbringing the kind of educational background we had the kind of you know uh, town we come from whatever it may be okay mindset extremely essential and possibly the most important that plays the most vital role in everything we do is our mindset our mindset is influenced by our culture and then we have our belief systems and by that i'm not talking about religious beliefs i'm talking about what we believe to be true and what we believe to be not true or what we believe is or what we believe isn't or what is possible or what is not possible or what we believe that we can or what we believe that we can't or what we believe that we should and what we believe that we shouldn't so it's our beliefs that impact every single thing that we do say or think okay the assumptions that we make which is quite similar to the beliefs that we have the unwritten rules unwritten rules could be your social conditioning in terms of again what your social structure is made of and uh, what are those unwritten rules about the should and the shouldn'ts uh, the can'ts and the don'ts and the won'ts and you know whatever else uh, the norms the norms that you again possibly hold in your life as an individual what are the norms that you live your life by uh, the stories we tell ourselves oh we tell ourselves a lot of stories isn't it if you're not telling yourself a story then there is something actually wrong with your you know you know something up there because 
each one of us, no matter how sorted, no matter how successful, no matter how much we achieve, there is a story we tell ourselves. And usually that story is something that holds us back. Um, it's very, it's very, very unusual that somebody is, as an individual, telling himself or herself a positive story that's propelling them forward. Stories are the ones that usually hold us back. And our perceptions about everything. Perceptions are really key. And I was sharing this example this morning because I talked about uh, my own career at the Taj when I started working in the hotel industry. And I come from a very, very humble background where luxury was never a concept. You know, luxury and uh, being in a luxurious environment was, you know, it was non-existent. We weren't even aware of what luxury is, so to speak. And then moving from that kind of a background to working in, in a hotel company that only runs luxury hotels was a massive step up. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity. But the fact is my perceptions came in the way of the speed at which I could have progressed in my career. My perceptions about you know, the people who spend money at the hotels. You know, for me, I just could not fathom at the time how was it possible for people to spend so much money when I was actually earning, you know, a small percentage of what they were spending at the hotel. So all of these things, they make a big impact. And these collectively or individually could be making and, uh, you know, uh, in, could be influencing how we think and therefore how we behave, what we say and based on that, how we contribute to this aspect of our organizations or our jobs. So it's extremely essential to be aware of this. Now, there are a lot of people who are aware of this, uh, but they don't necessarily know how to make the change because if any of these elements are negative or they're not contributing towards positive progress, towards success, then it makes a massive impact. Um, so what we really want to focus on is what really happens, break these things down into smaller steps and see where it goes from there for each one. So just want to quickly share with you this sort of a, um, you know, flow, if I may call it, in terms of what really happens. Um, so let's say that you had uh, an unsuccessful attempt at something. Given the current scenario again, even, and, but for, why the current scenario? Even before the current scenario, even before COVID, um, hoteliers have always had challenges uh, because of the nature of the business and the nature of the industry and the nature of the work that we're doing. Um, and there's never a situation where everything is perfect, right? So let's say just for generically speaking in any context, if there has been an unsuccessful attempt, if there's been an effort and that has been unsuccessful, for whatever reason, it could be because you didn't know how, or it could be because uh, you didn't have enough resources or whatever the reason might be, the attempt in delivering a result was unsuccessful. So what is the impact on our psychology then? It leads to demotivation, okay? It does lead to a feeling of demotivation, whether we are again aware or not, it's already happening at the deeper level, at the you know, below the surface of the iceberg level. The demotivation reduces our self-confidence, which means that uh, the next time we might have to try, we might, you know, uh, not try or maybe try half-heartedly or et cetera, because we're, we're operating from a place of reduced self-confidence. That in turn creates a mental block. And when we have a mental block, our brains are working in survival mode rather than thriving mode, yeah? Uh, a mental block basically effectively, really physiologically, it means that the, you know, your brain's capacity to think and create solution is, is blocked. And what it's only working on is the bare minimum in terms of what does it need to do to keep you alive, okay? Because our brains are, uh, as an organ, the job of the brain is to keep you alive, to keep you safe, okay? The job of the brain is not to, uh, by default, it does not create solutions. It has the capacity to, uh, but you've got to make it do that. Yeah. So there's a big difference. So naturally speaking, when 
there is a reduced self-confidence or a state of demotivation, what your brain thinks is that you, you need, uh, you're in danger, you're under threat and you need to survive. So what it does is it creates, it shuts down all the other centers of the brain that will generate and create ideas. It doesn't happen. Okay. And the result of this is then you keep going back. You, you actually don't go anywhere. So you either are back at square one, event one, or you keep going back into this whole circle and, you know, you get stuck in this, in this sort of scenario. And in the bargain, the, this part of your work starts to suffer and this shows and a lot of you are general managers in this collective a lot of you are hotel managers a lot of you may be team managers and you all have seen this in your teams for sure right and you all possibly have experienced it for yourselves as well so so the point or the purpose of this is we don't want to get stuck here we want to break out of this and the easiest way to do it is when we identify at which point we are stuck. And trust me, guys, breaking out of this cycle is actually the easiest thing that one can do. The most difficult thing is to remain in this situation. And then, you know, the more we remain in this, the, the deeper it pulls us in. It just keeps sucking us in. So... Uh, the reason I say it's really easy is I want to share one more thing is I had taught this to my son when he was eight years old. He's 11 now um, when he was eight and he had an inter-school competition for amongst some 800 children. And he was meant to present a topic that would be helpful to everybody. So he went and took this information and, you know, changed it around in his own basic way. And he went and presented it to 800 kids and some, you know, 50 teachers and judges and um, it was so impressive for everybody else that he won that competition. And, and I love saying this. And the reason I love saying it is not because of the fact that he won it, but because of the fact that how easy and simple it is to understand and to break out of, okay? So yeah, so this is basically what he did in his own way where uh, from his eight-year-old child brain, he was thinking about things that things go wrong. And in his world, things go wrong, meaning he could have lost a toy, broken a toy, left his important things behind at school, which is very, very common with children. You know, so when things go wrong, we get frustrated. When we get frustrated, we have negative feelings in our body, but we're never aware of them. Okay. And these negative feelings then affect our thoughts. And our thoughts affect our words and our behavior. Again, we all know this, but we do not pay conscious attention to it because it's all happening just so quickly, right? And then when we have negative words, negative body language, negative behavior, it gets us into more trouble. And the more trouble we get into, the more things go wrong, correct? So we, we've all, again, had some experience of this. So what is the solution? What is the solution? The solution is to move. So we're still in our iceberg. But if you, if you split this iceberg, we've got the left-hand side, which is the one that's negative. So where our attitudes are uh, not what they should be. Our internal focus is not what it should be. Uh, we have a lot of fear. We have a lot of negative feelings that are sitting in us that don't allow us to perform at the level we want to. So what we do is through changing our awareness, changing our attitude, changing our approach. And I want to show you that as well. Yeah. So a 3A mind style is what I love talking about is, is really operating at three different points or identifying at which point we need to make the change. Do we need to make the change in our awareness? One, or, and by awareness, we mean the things that we know. So it could be, do we need to have a, do we need to upskill ourselves in what we do? Do we need a different skill? Or do we need to think differently? Or do we need to know something differently? Uh, or do we need a different attitude? 
And the reason uh, I'm very happy that somebody put attitude in the poll is because this is a very, very vital component of everything we do. So an attitude is a settled way of thinking about anything or how we feel about something, right? And usually our attitudes are made up of very, very early experiences in our life. So we've already pre-decided certain things based on certain experiences. Uh, so I'm just saying, uh, like my attitude towards an iron, uh, you know, is like, oh, I don't like ironing clothes and not because it's a chore. Yes, because it's a chore actually, but more because my attitude towards an iron is more of, uh, you know, um, I don't want to go near it because when I was a child, I was accidentally burnt on my back with an iron. So that's obviously created my attitude towards that function because at a hidden level or at a deeper level, there must've been some fear, there's resistance, right? And it's funny that I'm bringing this up because I've actually never actually thought about this in my life. So, so that's my attitude is, is a little bit of resentment, a little bit of resistance towards ironing clothes, okay? And then your third element is your approach. An approach is a way you do something. And when we don't achieve a certain result, the common, the common thing is for us to try and different and do something else, okay? Or keep doing it. Um, in fact, th there's a fresh example on this one. My son was doing his homework yesterday and um, everything is online now, as we know. So he was on Google Classroom sitting and doing his homework and there was clear instructions there about what keystroke he needed to use um, to do some math symbols that he was doing. And rather than reading those clear instructions, which were pretty clear, he went on to Google, he researched what keystrokes he can use on his Mac and he, you know, all of that stuff. And then he kept trying to do what Google was showing instead of what instructions there were on his homework sheet. Okay. And then he was getting frustrated because what he was trying to do didn't work. And the approach that he had was he just kept repeating the same thing, even though it wasn't working. And finally he got frustrated, came up to me and said, mom, it's not working. I need your help. And all I needed to do is help him and say, let's read the instructions. Okay. Let's read the instructions and Let's try what the instructions say. And then when he tried it pronto, everything started working. So it's really what happens again with our states of mind. Um, so guys, the 3A mind style is really about identifying and changing or adding uh, an element that needs your awareness to be top, your attitude to be top and your ability to identify a different approach, your ability to take a different approach, okay? So that's what the 3A mind style is about. And under Hotelier Excellence, that's exactly what we offer to all hoteliers because we know how challenging the job already is. And uh, depending on, I would actually love to throw this open to you guys because um, I know in, in the old normal, uh, what, we used to do was run workshops for the hotel teams. And some of you have been on those workshops and some of you have benefited greatly from it. Some of you have, are still you know, using those tools and techniques to make the changes. Uh, but in the new normal, uh, that's not possible. So what is it that you guys would love? Would you love to be in a virtual workshop? Would you love to do some self-learning? Would you love one-to-one -one sessions where you, know, you get clarity on your specific requirements? What is it that you would love? Put your comments below and let me know because we are here to make that difference for you. And we want to make that difference because uh, I love my industry, I love hotels um, and I love hoteliers of course. So this is my contribution. I wanna do as much as I can from whatever I know. Okay, guys, so do get involved. Uh, put down your comments. Let me know what works for you. Does virtual workshops work for you? Because we wanna cover these aspects before we start looking at upskilling. 
or adding a different skill set because currently the market is full of people who already have the skills but they don't have the jobs okay so the ones who have the jobs are going to do whatever they can to retain them the ones who don't have the jobs are doing whatever they can to get a job or you know find a new way of or or even a new business in fact funnily before i uh, went on to this uh, live session i was on another call and uh, somebody was talking about helping people who have been furloughed who don't have the possibility of working or going back to a job in the current scenario and he is helping them to set up their own small businesses and i thought that was fantastic so with you guys um i know business some of for some of you may sound like a massive word but setting up a small business that helps you gain your source of income and keep you going in the new normal is vital so wherever you are uh give me a comment on what you would like or how you would like to learn these elements um virtual workshops or one to one sessions or self learning whatever it is that you like we are here we're all at home working from home uh, i'm based in london and we're going through another lockdown so all the time on hands guys okay so let me know and i will see you in the next one thank you for being here bye